Live from Houston, Texas, this is Big Ideas Small Business with Laura Camera and Brian Gendry. And you're listening to the music of Houston local Max Flynn. I'm starting to feel a little crazy again. I think it's time I start to pack my things. Yeah, so, so this is Big Ideas Small Business. This is a concept that Laura and I came up with to help small business owners, entrepreneurs, salespeople, marketers have some ideas about how they can grow their business and win in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so each week we're, we're going to be here at Rice University, 3.30 live, and then we'll go ahead and post this up to Apple Music, uh, SoundCloud, you know, have, have a lot of access to this. Mm -hmm. And uh, occasionally we're bringing guests. Yeah. Uh, we'd love for this to be interactive, so we're going to be talking about articles, mm -hmm. books, uh, yeah. you know, anything out there that you might want us to talk about, please send us yeah. your feedback and we'd love to put it on the, on the show. Yeah, yeah. If you'd like to post in our group, just... Uh, let us know your thoughts and if you have any questions about your business and if you have any suggestions for uh, things you'd like to learn more about in regards to your small business marketing and sales and growing your business. Um, so Brian, tell us a little about yourself and uh, your business. Sure, sure. So, so my name is Brian Gendron. Uh, I own an IT services firm. Uh, we work with uh, Houston owner-operated businesses helping support their IT infrastructure, mm -hmm. help desk, those types of things. Uh, the company's called Noxerve, and it's www.noxerve.com. Uh, we started last year, and uh, things are going well. You know, and, and certainly uh, sales is a sales and marketing when you're mm -hmm. launching a company is a huge yeah. part. In fact, maybe almost the biggest part of, yeah, of my efforts. And so, through that process and through you know 11 year career in sales and marketing, uh, I think I can bring a lot to, to the discussion. Mm -hmm. And um, happy to be here with you, Laura. So, awesome. how would you tell me about your business and yeah. who you are, where you come from? Yeah, thanks for, thanks for the intro for about your business. Sure. Um, I'm Laura Kamrath, president of Zebra Marketing Solutions. And I help people, I help uh, small business owners, coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs to get more leads so that they can get more customers through customized digital online marketing strategies so that they can make more money in their business and build the life of their dreams or the life they've always uh, wanted and um, generally grow in their business success. So I help people with um, websites, social media, I help build lead capture systems where, um, you know, I hear all the time from small business owners that, you know, they did online ads and it just didn't work. Well, um, they probably didn't have a lead capture system that was set up to be able to capture those leads that were generated from the ads and then nurture them into becoming customers. And we're gonna talk about that here today a little bit. Um, our topic for today is how to uh, get that first date with your customers and uh, build that relationship all the way through to marriage. So I know what you're thinking, what? I'm not gonna divorce my wife or husband and you know marry, literally marry my customer, no. But you wanna marry them in a, in a, in a business sense, right? So you want to um, build that relationship because you know I mean so Brian do you remember like did you ever have a first date I do I remember uh, I'm getting butterflies maybe the same butterflies now that I, <laughs> that I had then and it's true you know I'm, I'm married now and and, uh, and it's been gosh 12 years since I've even, <laughs> I've even dated uh -huh. but it really is right if you look at a relationship and it's a great analogy between I was in the dating game and, and mm -hmm. I acted a certain way mm -hmm. and now I'm married and I, and I act a, a very different way. And so I, I like it's very uh, very tightly aligned to, to sales and to customers. So I agree yeah. with that analogy. Yeah, so I mean if you think about it, um, you know, what do you do when you want to go on a date? You know, like you want to meet people, you want to be out there. You want people to know that you're single, you want to be able to, uh, I mean, like go to the bar. Well, maybe that's like in your business, you're going networking. You know, you're going out places where you're gonna see people that might be the right people to do business with. So, you know, you're gonna go places when you're dating someone that might be the right place to meet someone you might be interested in. Um, you know, you wanna be able to, um, you know, when you meet someone, what do you do? Like, when you went on a first date, I'm guessing the first thing that you did wasn't like, Oh, hey, you know, I really like you. Can I get your number? And do you uh, maybe want to get married one day? Like, no. <laughs> I, think, I think my wife did that. You know, I was thinking while you were talking, 
I was thinking while you were talking too, uh, obviously the dating game has changed and this is all past, you know, this is what didn't exist when I was around, right? But technology, just like it has in lead mm -hmm. capture and a lot of stuff that Laura does, uh, is now integrated. So if, if you guys are familiar with, you know, swipe right, swipe left, <laughs> whether it's Tinder or Bumble. Yeah. Uh, so, so again, very, very uh, similar to what we're experiencing in business is the same thing that's going on in dating, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, like when I was, I guess in high school, there was no Tinder, there was no right. Bumble, there was no, you know, none, none of that. Um, you know, maybe we were just starting to get, uh, I guess we got Facebook when I was in college, now I'm dating myself. But, um, Me too. you know, um, before that, you know, the only way to meet people was like, you know, sending them a letter or sending them an email or going out. Now, now there's like a lot more options. There's social media now, there's, um, uh, online marketing, there's online advertising. Now this is, this is a PSA and we're at Rice University here. Yeah. So for the college <laughs> students, you know, the interesting thing is, is that, you know, those old tactics that Laura's talking about, writing a letter or, or actually getting out and, and going to places where you might meet a significant other, you know, those tactics still are, exist, right? And that, that actually might yield more quality uh, partners and maybe somebody you'd marry. Mm -hmm. Whereas the technology, you know, somebody that found you on technology could just as easily find somebody else. So, you know, keep that in mind as you're doing your prospecting. You know, old school techniques can go a long way and yeah. I'll share some of those over time, some of the yeah. ones that I use. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, technology doesn't necessarily replace um, traditional methods, right. but I would also say that um, for the price um, using technology, like using online ads, and the the the, the um, cost to benefit is is greater now using technology than not. It's very expensive these days to do direct mail. Uh, not not that direct mail doesn't work; it can be very effective. Absolutely. But it is going to be significantly more expensive than say doing Facebook ads. Um, so, you know, in your business, like you just have to take that into account and see, you know, well, what's going to be right for my market? What's going to be right for my budget? Um, yeah, you know, the other thing to think about there is qualify, 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 right? Yeah. So now that you're utilizing technology, sure, you're going to have a lot of inbound leads and, and Laura can, has, does a terrific job in, in, in doing that, but are they the right leads for your business? Are they mm -hmm. actually going to cost you more money? Yeah. Then, then they're going to make because they're not the right yeah. fit, right? Well, and that and that that that's a great point too, Brian. Um, you know, I mean, when you're dating somebody, like, okay, maybe you're like, okay, like, you want to know who you are as a person, right? When you're dating someone, so that you know, you might you might have to mm -hmm. go on a whole lot of dates if you don't really understand yourself or what you want. Right. You're going to have to go on a lot of dates before you figure that out. That, that's correct. So you know, in the same in business. You know, if you're, if you don't really know who's gonna want your product, you don't really know what you offer, you don't really know like what your message should be because you didn't really narrow down your target market to know what is it that they really want. Why are you selling to them? Why are you? Why would they want your solution? You know, what are you offering to them, and and what problems are is it gonna solve for them? Right. Yeah, I mean, going back to the, the analogy, right? I mean, if you're, I, I say this a lot to younger people, I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, 30 is the age, and it's not set in stone, but that's an age where you've kind of defined who you are as a person. Yeah. Of course, some people are a little earlier now, a lot of people who are 40 and still haven't figured out, right? You know, so there's exceptions, <laughs> but but ultimately the, 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 the idea is right, right in line with what Laura's saying, and the same mm -hmm. thing with maturity as a company. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, uh, when you're first starting a company, you're kind of still figuring it out, kind of fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there, you're like eager to date anybody, you know. You're, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, over time, you really need to focus on on qualifying and identifying who you are, who you want to be matched with, because mm -hmm. that leads us into marrying yeah. a client, yeah. Which, yeah. which is the second half. I don't know if we're quite ready to get into marriage. We still. We're I don't still know. It's a little early. Yeah, Brian. a little bit know. forward. I mean, gosh. Laura, I want to have two kids. <laughs> But, but 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 that's a good point though like you would never go on a first date and when you sit down with that person say oh you know hey I was just wondering I mean maybe your wife did I don't know but like you know you would never usually go on a first date and be yeah. like so um, you know it's really nice to get to know you when do you want to get married and how many kids do you want to have right like for most people on a first date they would probably 
run. Right. <laughs> you know, they'd be like, oh my god, this right. person's crazy, right. you know, like, I don't even know if I like them, they all want, already want to get married. Sure. Well, I mean, the same with your customer, like, like, you can't just go into the relationship like, oh hey, I know that we just met, but hey, um, do you want to buy my, like, top of the line package? Like, for the most part, the customer is just going to be like, I don't even know you, I don't know what you do, I don't know if you're trustworthy, I don't know if, uh, you know, you're going to really do what you said you're going to do. Right. So, like, you need to give that customer a, a level of trust. You need to build the relationship so that, you know, they get to know you, that they understand, you know, part, and there's a lot of different ways of doing that. Um, yeah, and you said something that's, that's important. I mean, first, you know, they have to be attracted to you, okay? So mm -hmm. they have to like you in some way. And then second, they have to trust you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and only once you've achieved those things. And then the other thing to think about, I remember uh, when I had some, like, let's go back to girlfriends in high school. <laughs> and I could barely afford jewelry, which was great yeah. because anytime you were dating a girl, you're like, all right, I'm going to start with this $35 silver. And then you kind of grow it from there. And by the time, you know, in high school, by the time you're up to like $150 gold, they're like, it's time to break up. <laughs> <laughs> and so you do the same thing, like with, with my wife when we were dating and it was serious. You know, you'd start with like a, a quarter carat diamond and then mm -hmm. you kind of eight. Might be a little bit too aggressive. I think it was like <laughs> it was like shards of diamonds. That, you know what I mean? And then you kind of scale yeah. up. And it's yeah. kind of the same thing with customers. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody told me once, you know, if you're if you're gifting, over gifting your customer, mm -hmm. your prospects, excuse mm -hmm. me, in the beginning, what does that make you? It makes you a gold digger. <laughs> and, and how does that work out, right? You yeah. know, I thought that was a pretty valuable yeah. lesson. Yeah. So I mean, really, you know, save the the, the and of course you're courting these people mm -hmm. and, and you're and you're you know, yeah. gaining that trust and, and, and over time you're doing the things that you need to do, yeah. position yourself properly, but don't overdo it either. Yeah. You know, don't buy that yeah. diamond ring on the first, second week of dating. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that being said, that doesn't include what I would call wowing your customer. That's correct. So, you know, you always want to over deliver. You want them to feel like, you know, they got so much more than they thought they were going to get, you know. I didn't know. I mean, have you ever like ordered something online and it comes in, you know, a box and you open it up and there's like a little handwritten note and it says, you know, thanks so much for ordering my book or whatever it is. And maybe sends a piece of candy or something, you know, that's small, but it's like, oh, well that was nice. I wasn't expecting that. So like think about things in your business, like what is it that you could do to um, over deliver? Um, maybe they bought, you know, X product and you offered X and a little bit of Y and you know they didn't know they were gonna get Y and now they're like oh wow you know that was really nice like you know I love doing business with this person like what is it you know like Brian was saying you know when you were dating someone like you would get them a, a, a little necklace or something mm -hmm. you know and probably when when that girl received the necklace she was probably like oh wow he really cares about me you know, like when your customer gets that little extra thing, they say, oh, well, like they really cared. Like they really care about this. Yeah. And, and you know, we've, we, we left out another important thing. You know, these people are going to go out, these partners or customers or people you're about to date, they're going to ask their friends about you, right? There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a whole yeah. reputation side to this yeah. and it kind of gets into reputation management mm -hmm. uh, of your company, right? Because now, you know, I know we mentioned that really social media and these dating apps haven't been around for very long and not in my dating career. Mm -hmm. Uh, but your information is out there on the internet for everybody to yeah. see, right? Yeah. And so, you know, that that's something to be considerate yeah. of, of, you know, what, how are people reviewing you? Because mm -hmm. they're going to go look. How are people that, that, you know, common people that you mm -hmm. know, do they speak highly of you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the negative reviews, that's a reality of, of yeah. being in business. And then yeah. how do you professionally address those? Right? Yeah, and definitely, I mean, like, you're going to get negative reviews, Um I would say like one thing you want to do is you want to ask your customers for reviews, especially the customers you know are really satisfied. So if you just delivered um, your service or product to a customer, you know they were really happy with it, you want to ask them for a review. And you know, there are actually you know systems where you can automate that where it's going to ask them for a review right. um, so you don't have to think about it. But, but you do want to think about it, and I know a lot of small business owners really, they don't ask. That's right. And that's, that's the closest, um, they, we call it in marketing, closest to the cash. That's your closest opportunity to making more money is asking someone that you already have a relationship with either for a referral or for um, more business. You know, is there anything else I can help you with? I mean, the, the, the most famous ones of those is, 
you know, do you want fries with that at McDonald's? Right. You know, I mean, think about over time, worldwide, how much asking that question has made McDonald's. <laughs> That's true. But, well, and, and look, if you're not asking for those reviews, their you know, likelihood of somebody to leave a bad review yeah. is way higher than them to go out, out of their way right. and leave a good well, review. And, so. and, yeah, and the, other, and the other thing is that if somebody does give you a bad review, you can bury it with good reviews. That's, what was just, that, and that's yeah. kind of what I was saying, and, like yeah. break, and it's just like break up with them on good terms. Because yeah. then if you don't, you might ruin your future dating yeah. relationship. Same thing. And, and always respond in a positive manner even when that's you right. get negative feedback. So right. if somebody gives you a negative review, you know, you want to you want to quickly address that before it becomes an issue. You know, I'm so sorry you weren't satisfied. I'm so sorry you hadn't had a problem. Mm -hmm. What can we do to make it right? That's right. Um, you don't want to just ignore it or try and rush it under the rug or try and delete it. If you delete it, that can actually make things worse because now people think that, you know, you're trying to hide something. That's right. And we call that reputation management. Yeah. So. Uh, so let's let's move into all right. We've 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 courted this customer. Mm -hmm. We found out that we're into each other. You know, <laughs> you proposed to them, and, and they've accepted your proposal. Mm -hmm. And now they're a customer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how does how do Laura, how do things change when you go from from that into that customer stage with the relationship? Yeah. Well, um, you know, like I said, uh, you know, first you want to wow the customer. You want to over deliver go above and beyond, make sure they know that you care, that you love them, mm. show them the love. Um, but you also want to, you know, you want to continue to make sure they know right. that you care. 65% um, of customers say that they left a company because, not because they were dissatisfied, not because they didn't get what they wanted, but because they were indifferent. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, they didn't really care, you know. and. That's really a shame. That's sixty-five percent of customers, you know, saying that you know they left because of indifference. Right. So what can you do? That's that's sixty-five percent where you can make a difference. Right. That's, that's, that's in your exactly that's in your court. Now the other yeah. thirty-five percent is maybe because you screwed up or something. Right. And those things, you know, sometimes are out of your control. Yeah. But this this is sixty-five percent that you can yeah. control. So I mean, so what do you do? How yeah, do you so not like, be indifferent? Yeah. So like, what are the ways that you can continue to show the love? Right. Continue to build that relationship even after the purchase is made. Don't just be like, oh, you know, you bought my thing. Okay, that's awesome. Right. I'll see you later. Right. You know, right. like, what if you got married? You know, what if you married your wife and you're like, okay, awesome. I won the game. I'm married. Like, yeah. I got her. Okay, I'll see you later. I'm going to go play golf. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there, I, I know that I've seen that scenario, you know, the trophy wife scenario. Um, but no, look, I mean that's that's true. I can certainly I've got now four years of marriage experience too, and, about, <laughs> and, and it's hard, right? It's hard to to figure out new ways to kind of go back to that spark that you had when you were dating, mm -hmm. and and uh, you know it's really difficult for you to do that with your clients, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But you need to get creative. You know, we were talking yeah. about it off the air, and it was it was uh, to me it was like make sure you know kind of have your baselines covered. You know, they're family members' names, certainly, mm -hmm. you know, their birthdays, you know, don't miss holidays, mm -hmm. uh, find out things that are important to them, Yeah. right, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and that goes the longest way. Uh, I used to work with a young lady, and she used to, do, she, she's so funny, She her, her, parent, her father-in-law was a farmer, and they have chickens, and she mm -hmm. would come back with dozens and dozens of fresh farm eggs, and that mm -hmm. would be what she would she would give to her existing clients, you know, huh, she that's saw really them. Cool. It's it's such a different yeah, thing. Yeah, like what can you do that's different? And it's you know, can either be you know something that that they care about or yeah. something that really kind of makes you know something you care about or, or sort of makes you a person, right? Mm -hmm. um, it goes kind of both ways, but you got to be doing it, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, have, you, have you had any examples of how I guess you kind of nurture or keep that that spark alive with some of your clients? Yeah, I mean, especially with um, marketing automation and digital marketing. I mean, I mean, everybody knows uh, about social media. Um, you know, what can you share? Figure out first what um, social media channels would be best for your business. And then put useful content on there. Um, if you're posting to social media, you should keep it, I call it the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time you should be talking about things that would bring value to your customers and only 20% of the time talking about yourself or making offers or, you know, promotions, whatever it might be. But the thing is, you know, I mean, say, say like you went on a date with somebody, has anyone here ever been on a bad date 
and like you go it's a first date you sit there with a person and all they do is talk about themselves right. mm -hmm. you're probably never gonna go on a date with them again that's right so but unfortunately a lot of small business owners because you know we're all busy and we don't have a lot of time and so we don't post anything until it's like oh I'm offering a sale I'm offering a promotion oh here this is some information about my business mm -hmm. but like people aren't gonna necessarily care about your business unless they feel like you're adding value to them so totally. you know just thinking about how can I bring more value to my uh, prospects and customers yeah I heard I heard a lot in there you know certainly the two years one mouth is, is universally true whether you're dating or you're married yeah. uh, one thing that I always like to do with my clients and and certainly let my prospects know that once they're a client of mine then it it is in my best interest that they grow and yeah. then they would need more of my services, and that's true for most most businesses, and especially in the service industry, yeah. or even in, in products, right? They're mm -hmm. gonna need more of your products. Yeah. So if, if you can make connections for them, that's gonna help their business grow. Yeah. I mean, isn't that powerful? You know, mm -hmm. it, that's one way to stay in touch with, with, with your active clients and, yeah. and, 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 and hit on yeah. things that are that will interest them. Yeah. Hey, I met, I met this person, you know, maybe it's, a, it's somebody who's working in construction remodeling, and, and you're like, hey, I met this, um, this somebody who works in commercial real estate, mm -hmm. I think you guys could really help you out. That's really, really valuable way mm -hmm. to, to keep in touch with your clients, yeah. outside of the box. Yeah, and from the dig digital marketing side, I would say, you know, um, social media, uh, doing an e-newsletter, maybe a weekly e-newsletter. Um, maybe you can take your blog and post it to your newsletter so that, you know, people don't have to go to your website to see it um, and then put things of value you know things that would be of value to your customers in your newsletter um, yeah one, I mean one other and so that you know again with your newsletter same thing you were talking about earlier using the 80 20 rule yeah, right yeah. So, so whenever you're exactly. proud of that like here's some some things some some ideas that can help yeah. you with your with your business or with your life and I yeah. do that with my newsletter mm -hmm. and then by the way here's some promotions or right. events that we're having at the bottom and, yeah and that's that same approach yeah I mean you don't you don't want to overload your customers with um, talking about yourself because it'll make them just tune out and, and you want them listening to you so Wait, and you talked about social media a few times mm -hmm. one of the things that that I'm I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm too chicken shit to do but you know <laughs> have your have your clients on your social media on your presence you know let, allow them to leverage or leverage each other's networks to grow. Right. Yeah. And so for me, it might be like, hey, you know, you're a, you're a, uh, you're in mortgage lending. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let's talk about mortgage lending in technology. So yeah. then you're kind of hitting on on both of our industries. You're hitting both of our networks right. yeah. and getting exposure for, for yeah. each other. So that's another idea. Yeah. And I would say like a nice thing to do, like if you're a consultant or a coach or even you know IT consultant, anything like that. Um, Creating a Facebook group where you're you can add your customers and add your um, you know people who are interested in your business um, you know uh, friends colleagues clients and let those people interact because you know those are the people that are your fans and you want to encourage your fans to become basically your evangelists. You want those people to shout from the tops of the mountains how awesome you are. And so you do that by building your reputation, letting those people build a community. That's right. Um, so that you can create basically a movement. You want, you want you know, a movement of people behind you who are ready to tell all their friends how great you are. <laughs> basically the, that's 100% that's right and and Laura was at my launch party back in January for Noxerve and, and that was exactly the intent right you know you know gather up all the support around you it's like rocket fuel to help mm -hmm. you launch your company and mm -hmm. let them be your evangelist and by the way that doesn't just have to be for somebody who's starting a company mm -hmm. if you change jobs it's not a bad idea to get some of your close circle together explain to them what they're doing you know buy them some drinks and, and get them on your side you know that doesn't just doesn't just need to yeah. be limited to somebody who's starting a business. Right, that's right? true, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, any closing thoughts? We're kind of getting uh, towards the end of, uh, of our time here. We're gonna try to keep these about 25 minutes. We figure that's about the average commute in Houston. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> average commute to work, so, uh, but any other closing thoughts here on our first podcast? Um, you know, I, I'm just like really excited about, you know, big ideas, small business, and I'm passionate about helping small businesses succeed. And so I'm really excited for um, you know the community we're going to build around uh, uh, around this, and uh, I'm excited just to 
bring ideas and uh, thoughts and uh, um, you know everything to grow people's businesses so that we can all you know be out golfing or whatever we want to do travel to Tahiti yeah. go to Hawaii all, all that stuff that you want to do in your life like we want to help you get there so uh, I, yeah I couldn't agree more you know our, our this is this is truly to help people that, that that are engaged with this podcast we want you my hope is that we can we can you know have that engagement bring things that people want to hear about uh, but I also look forward to a day when, when Laura and I are months and maybe even years down the road with mm -hmm. this and we can look back at this first one and laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, but, but Laura, uh, th this is great. I'm really looking forward to collaborating you more with this uh, Big Ideas Small Business. And, yeah. uh, and thank you all if you've joined us. And if not, we're going to be putting this on, on some, some different channels for people to listen to after, after our live broadcast. All right. It was fun. Sounds thank you. awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to Big Ideas Small Business. Please visit our website at www.bisbmedia.com.